Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Entire border wall could be paid for through illegals. Should Trump do this? The debate on President Trump's border wall rages on. Some of it has been paid for and construction has already begun, but billions more are needed to complete the project. I have said from the very beginning that there are multiple ways to fund building the wall. If our leaders did what they are supposed to, they would just approve the entire $18 billion or so that Trump has requested. After all, it is a significantly lower amount in comparison to what we actually pay to have illegal aliens here in the first place. But as long as progressive Republicans benefit from cheap labor and Marxist Democrats benefit from padded voter rolls, it's not likely to come from our politicos unless something radically changes or gives. There is a way that pays for the wall that does not involve Mexico or U.S. taxpayers paying for it. It's so simple, even a bureaucrat should be able to embrace the idea. If we just close the border and don't let any more illegal immigrants in to sit on the federal dole and get free bennies, the wall would be self-funding. That's right. But there are those who are asking if Trump should do this. Heck yeah, he should. The brilliance here is in the simplicity of the move. A number of recent immigration studies show that the $18 billion or so wall that President Trump has in the works will pay for itself by curbing the importation of not only crime and drugs, but poverty. Not to mention the elimination of federal welfare for illegal immigrants which should not exist in the first place. The wall could pay for itself even if it only modestly reduced illegal crossings and drug smuggling. Stephen A. Camarota, director of research at the Center for Immigration Studies stated. Even the rusty, poorly constructed two-story corrugated metal fence in El Paso, Texas has reduced illegal immigration by 89 percent over the five-year period during which it was built. That was constructed under the Bush administration. The wall that Trump is building is better constructed and is built in such a way as to deter even more illegal immigrants from even trying to scale it. Democrats of course want any company even submitting a bid on the wall to be blacklisted. But capitalism wins out every time in this country. So does innovation. Without the wall and security, the Homeland Security Department forecasts an additional 1.7 million illegal crossings at the U.S. Mexico border over the next decade. I think that is a severe underestimation of an invading force trying to make its way into the United States, encouraged by the new Mexican president. From the New York Post If a wall stopped just 200,000 of those future crossings, Camarota says, it would pay for itself in fiscal savings from welfare, public education, refundable tax credits and other benefits currently given to low-income, illegal immigrants from Mexico and Central America. If a wall stopped 50 percent of those expected crossings, he says, it would save American taxpayers a whopping $64 billion, almost four times the wall's cost, to say nothing of the additional billions in federal savings from reduced federal drug interdiction and border security enforcement. Camarota explains that illegal border crossers from Mexico and Central America, who account for more than 75 percent of the illegal immigrant population in the U.S., are overwhelmingly poor, uneducated and lack English language and other skills. In fact, the average Latino illegal immigrant has less than a tenth-grade education. That means if they work, they tend to make low wages, and as a result pay relatively little in taxes while using public services. And if they have children while in the U.S., they more often than not receive welfare benefits on behalf of those U.S.-born children, who have the same welfare eligibility as any other citizen. A large share of the welfare used by immigrant households is received on behalf of their U.S.-born children, Camarota said. This is especially true of households headed by illegal immigrants. Therefore, illegal border crossers create an average fiscal burden of more than $72,000 during their lifetimes, Camarota says, including costs for their U.S.-born children the fiscal drain jumps to more than $94,000. Did you know that according to the Census Bureau, 62 percent of illegal immigrant-headed households are on the federal dole? That's more than double the rate for households headed by native-born Americans. This includes households where one or more workers are present. These illegal immigrant-headed households are where welfare is the highest for food stamps and Medicaid. Some illegal immigrants use fraud to get federal bennies through green card holders. The administrators handling their cases also tend to screw up a lot and give out benefits they shouldn't. Using Medicaid, some pregnant women who are illegal aliens are at times enrolled in welfare as well. An emergency Medicaid program also covers the supposed needs of illegal immigrants. If adult illegal aliens can't pay their hospital bills, this multi-billion dollar program offsets those costs for the hospitals that treat them. This not only includes ER visits, but chemotherapy and radiation therapy for illegal immigrants. It's very costly. And it goes on.
the IRS every year pays out billions to illegal immigrants in refundable child tax credits and the earned income tax credit as well. I'm sure there is a whole list of other programs that feed this beast too. The benefits are massive to illegal immigrants and their families. From the beginning, Democrats have screeched over the $18 billion price tag of the wall. But the Dreamers amnesty bill would cost U.S. taxpayers even more than the construction of the border wall over 10 years. The cost of the DREAM Act has been estimated as very large, a $26 billion net cost in the first 10 years, Kamarota said. The Congressional Budget Office recently estimated that 3 million DREAM Act recipients would receive an estimated $12 billion plus in Obamacare subsidies, more than $5.5 billion in Medicaid benefits, $5.5 billion in earned income and child tax credits and more than $2 billion in food stamps. That's just obscene. Actual Americans don't feed at the federal trough like this and they shouldn't. Neither should illegal immigrants regardless of their age. Since the DREAM Act was shot down in the Senate, Trump has given a go-ahead to a tougher border bill introduced by Senator Chuck Grassley, Arya, which limits the number of DACA beneficiaries to 1.8 million, curbs family visas, or so-called chain migration, and phases out the diversity visa lottery, while earmarking $25 billion in funding for the wall and other border security. But it's stalled as well to a certain extent because of obstructionist Democrats. If we would just clamp down hard on the border and stop these people from illegally crossing, it would do the entire nation a favor and fund the wall, while stopping the economic bleed out over free benefits to illegal aliens. Just do it. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.